In this video, I'm going to show you how to take your boring rendering from your Vetrix software. And then I'm going to show you how you could take that image and turn it into something like this that looks super realistic. And this would be a great thing you can send to a customer. You can post on your website or your social media. And I'm sure your customers would be very impressed by something like this. And all of this can be done under a few minutes. It's super simple to do. And you can see even up here on top of the sign, you can add a little bird or something that makes it look super realistic. And all this is AI generated. So I'm going to show you how this is done with only a few simple steps. Now, in order to do what I'm about to show you, you're going to need Adobe Photoshop. And this is going to be the new beta version of their AI powered software. So if you already have Adobe products or if you sign up for them, you're going to have what's called the Adobe Creative Cloud. And inside of this app, you're going to see where it says beta apps. You're going to click on that and you're going to see where it says Photoshop beta. You're going to install that one there. Now, like I said, you do need to have Photoshop for this. So if you don't have that and you want it, this is a subscription type product. So there's usually a monthly or annual fee for this. You can go to Adobe's website to check that out. And this is in beta mode right now. In the future, this will be their normal app. But right now, since this new AI just came out within the last week, this is now only in beta mode, but I'm sure all of this will get more advanced as I start making updates. So in order to do what I showed you earlier, you're going to first need to create your sign or whatever type of product you're making inside of your Vetrix software, and you're going to preview your toolpaths. And I recommend going up to the toolpath tab and where it says preview simulation quality, I recommend turning up to maximum because that will give you the best quality type of preview that you're going to see. And this will give you the most realistic view. Also, you can change colors inside of your sign. So right now you can see I have everything filled in black. Up here where the global fill is, you can change all the colors at the same time, or you can change specific toolpaths by using the toolpath color option. I do have separate videos on how to change the toolpath colors. So I will link that down in the description. But once you get your toolpath preview exactly the way you like it, you're going to change the view however you want it to look in your final picture. So if you wanted to look at it from a side like that, you can save it like this. Or if you want to look at it right from the front, you can click the Z axis button up here in the corner and you'll see it'll look at it right from the front. And I also recommend clicking this button here to fill the screen. That will zoom in as close as it can to get a nice preview image. So once you get your sign exactly in the view that you like it, and the preview is exactly the way you want it, you're going to click save preview image. And I recommend saving this as a PNG image. That's going to be the highest quality. So make sure you select that one and then you can give it a name. I'll just say sign and click save. Now that's going to save as an image onto your computer. So you can see if I open that image and bring it into the screen here, you can see it looks just like we see inside of Vetric. So this is perfectly fine. If you don't need anything else fancy in the background or anything like that, this would be perfectly fine to send to a customer or a client or post on your website. But if you want to go the extra mile and make something mo look more realistic, this is where we're going to take this into Photoshop and change the background or change anything else you'd like to on the sign. So to do that, we're going to go into Photoshop and this is the new Photoshop, the beta version, and we're going to click open and we're going to open that file. Once you bring this into Photoshop, you're going to see the image that we saved from Vetrix software. And you're also going to see this new box at the bottom here. If you're not familiar with Photoshop, this never was here before. This is a new AI powered tool that you can use to generate just about anything you can think of. So it's a very powerful tool and it's only going to get more powerful from this point forward. So what I'm going to do in this example is I want to add in more background so I can make a larger image like we showed in the beginning of the lesson. And to do that, I'm going to zoom out first. So if you hold the alt key on your keyboard and scroll your wheel out, you can zoom out and then I'm going to go to the crop tool. And with this, you can set a exact ratio if you want. I'm going to use a standard 16 by nine ratio. You can change this to anything you want though. And then I'm going to grab one of these corners. And if you hold the alt key, it'll keep it centered and you can make this as big as you want. So I'm going to make it about that large there. And I also want to put the image off centered. You can leave it centered if you want, but I'm going to use the move tool 
And actually before I do this, I'm gonna remove the background. And to do that, you can either use the automatic tools down here. Sometimes they'll clip off some of your sign. So you have to play around with your tolerance settings there. Another tool I like to use is called the Magic Eraser. So if you click on the eraser and hold in your mouse, you can come down here to the Magic Eraser tool. And up here, you have to pay attention to your tolerance. If it's too low, it might not take enough. If it's too high, it may take too much. So I'm gonna start out at 30. Well, let's see what that looks like. I'll click on this purple area. And you see just like that, it removed all that purple area. And then all this brand new white space, I can click on that. And you can see that has now been removed. So now I can use my move tool and move this sign anywhere I want on the project. I'm gonna move it over here and we'll see what it does. And what I wanna do with this is create a nice lake scene with a nice mountain range in the background. And to do that, you first have to isolate around your image so it does not remove that. So the part that we wanna keep, we need to draw a selection box around that. And the easiest way to do that now that it's isolated by itself is right click on the layer and go up to select pixels. And when you do that, it will put a box right around the item that you wanna keep. Now, if we were to use the AI tool right now, it would replace this sign. So instead we have to select the background, not the sign. And to do that, you just simply click this button right here that inverts the selection. So when you click on that, now it also put a bounding box around the perimeter of your project and around the perimeter of your object that you wanna keep. So now the background is selected. So here is where the fun part comes in and where the AI part takes over. So down here where it says generative fill, you're gonna click on that. And this is where you're going to type in whatever you want the background to look like. So you can describe what you want and it will generate it using AI. You can click generate and it'll just automatically do something. You never know what it's gonna do with that. So if you want something exactly, I would type it in here. So I'm just gonna type something simple. I'm gonna say lake with mountain range. And you can see that's a very simple prompt. You can get more descriptive with this and the more descriptive you get, the better it'll look. But let's try something simple and click generate. And when you do that, it's gonna load this box. Sometimes it'll take longer than others, but you can see this one's moving pretty quickly. And once it's done, you can see just like that, it created your mountain range with a nice lake back there. And it will give you three different prompts every time. So you can see this one actually created a pole and has a different lake and mountain range behind it. And this one created a pole as well. So sometimes it will automatically know what it needs to put in there. Sometimes it will not. But you can see this looks very realistic and very nice. Now, let's say you wanted to add a pole in this one. It's super simple to do. Go to the rectangle tool and just draw a box around where you wanna place that pole. So I'm gonna say right here and just type what you want. So I'm gonna say pole for sign and click generate. And now that I just generated that, you can see I can now look through three different options it's given me. And I kinda like that one the best. So you can decide if you wanna keep that or not. It's on a new layer. Every time you create something with the AI, it places it on a new layer that is non-destructive to the original image. So you can hide those layers, you can delete them, and you can also just type in a new prompt and it'll give you more options to work with. And you can see already this is looking very nice. Now, if you wanna go even further with this, you could draw a selection box right above the sign. And by the way, the more you select, the more data it's gonna to have to work with so it'll know a little bit more what you're trying to do. If you only select a little tiny box, it's not gonna have much data to uh, know what's outside of that box. So right here, I'm gonna type in bird uh, sitting on sign. And then I'm gonna click generate. And you can see sometimes it'll look realistic, sometimes it won't. So you can play around with this. And you can see that one even gives you a little shadow on top of the sign. So as you can see, very powerful and if i click away from that this is what it's looking like so far and then you also have the power of all of photoshop's different editing tools to further edit this however you like you can even add a boat in the water you just draw a selection box and say boat in water 
and then you can see it'll give you three options. Like I said, sometimes it will look realistic, sometimes it won't. So you'll have to decide which one you like. That one looks pretty nice. And if I click away, you can see this sign is looking more and more realistic. You can add an airplane in the sky. You can add different clouds. You can add a sun. You can add whatever you want to the sign. And you can see it's looking very nice. And this will be a nice image to post on your website or your social media or just send it to your customer. And this will give them a nice idea of how the sign will actually look in a natural environment. And then once you're happy with your image, you can now export it and go to export as a PNG file. And you can now save it and send it to your customer. And I'll just name it sign number two and save. And now you can see the original sign picture we had. And now here is the brand new one. And you can see this one looks like you went much more above and beyond for your customer or your client. And you can see there is some errors there. You can still adjust. Uh, like I said, you have all the Photoshop's tools. You can play around with those. You can also change around all the prompts that you create. But for only a few minutes of work, you can see this looks really good in Photoshop without an AI tool. This probably would have taken you hours to do. You can see it even makes the shadows underneath on the pole, shadows underneath on the bird. So it's very realistic. It's got the shadow and reflection on the water. That's all things that would take you hours to do and make them look this nice. So I know this is a little bit different than my normal content, but I figured I'd show you guys this new tool in case you want to check it out and just add something cool you can do with your renderings. And this doesn't stop at the Vetrix software renderings. You can make 3D models and other softwares like Fusion 360 or SketchUp or anything you use, bring in the image into Photoshop and create a masterpiece from it. So let me know down below in the comments what you think of these new AI tools. I know they can be a little bit scary on how powerful they are, but they are definitely an interesting tool you can use to speed up some things inside of your workflow. But if you like this video, make sure you leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. That's all for this video. Make sure you like and subscribe for more. And if you want to master your Vetrix software, make sure you check out my Vetrix training classes linked right here, where we go much more in depth how to use the Vetrix software step by step. And included with my training courses is weekly Q&A calls where I can answer your questions one on one and get the support you need. And if you want to watch another great Vetrix tip, check out this video posted right here.